So we were asking a question, what happens when we reduce voltage and frequency both by 15% and how does dynamic power change? So here is the expression. So the dynamic power is half into capacitive load into voltage squared into frequency switched. Now voltage is reducing by 15%. So you can assume that it is going to be 0.85 of the original voltage. And the frequency is also reduced by 15%, which is going to be 0.85 of the original frequency, right? 85% of the original frequency. So that becomes 0.85 cube of the old power dynamic, which is nothing but around 60% or over the old power. So we can actually, the new power is going to be only 60% of the old power, or you can reduce it by 40%, which is pretty good. So reducing both voltage and frequency can have tremendous impact on the dynamic power and this is something that we exploit extensively uh, in our architecture now other than dynamic power there's also another component do you know what that is that is static power right and today the static power is also a big big component now when you are scaling transistors right so when you're making it smaller and smaller what you actually are doing here is you're playing a lot with the gate the length of the gate of the transistor so the transistor has three components the source the drain and the gate right so the current flows from the source to the drain via the gate now the gate is shrinking right you're making smaller and smaller and smaller so there is a very small channel that you can create Right, the channel is very small so that small channel is what current is going to flow through right and that is what we call as the static current because that's a current that is flowing when you're when when you are switching it off there's no power applied to the transistor but there's a very small current flowing through it we call that leakage current and this is a leakage current that flows even when the transistor is off and that's why the static power is becoming a very very important problem so the static power is the static current that's a leakage current that's flowing through it multiplied by the voltage and today when you when you compute you're going to compute both the dynamic power of the system as well as the static power and in certain cases depending on the number of components that you have static power can have a bigger chunk of the of the total power now leakage power increases in processes with smaller transistor sizing and if you're increasing number of transistor, uh, uh, if increasing number of transistors will increase the power even when they're turned off, and that's another problem. So when you're talking of this dark silicon problem, you also have to play a role. You also have to think about the number of transistors that are off because they also will dissipate some power in terms of leakage. Now in 2011, the goal for this leakage was to be around 25%, and for high performance designs, this can be as high as 50% of the total power, right? So if you think about it, 50% is leakage power. That is, you're doing new computation, you're switching off all these transistors, but there's still power in them. And then there's dynamic power, which is the active power that's switching on and off the transistor. So if you add all of this, the power of power of systems are increasing. The dynamic and static power, the total power is quite high. And that directly affects the temperature. And as temperature increases, the reliability decreases, right? It becomes hot, the chips start becoming hot, and uh, the chances of them failing increases. So we want to reduce the static power. We want to make sure that our dynamic power is reduced by DVFS, doing some amount of some techniques like gating uh, and so on. The next thing we will see is understanding dependability and reliability of systems because this is also a very important aspect when you're looking at large systems right that's dependability is important even in your cell phones right if cell phones uh, don't work then they are unreliable and you you have to buy a new one whereas if you look at large servers you can't just throw throw the servers away right so you want to ha make sure that you can repair them you can fix them so that they are up and working and so on now how do we decide when a system is operating properly so we need to have some way of metric for defining the proper operation of the system right so most often 
infrastructure providers will offer some SLA or service level GAR agreements that will guarantee that the networking or the power service would be dependable. And they can say that, you know, this particular service will be dependable for so many hours. Right? That's a guarantee that they provide these um, service level agreements will provide, right? So you can assume that these systems generally are going to alternate between two levels, right, with respect to this SLA. One we call this as service accomplishment, which says that, you know, where the service is delivered as specified in the SLA. So where you're getting uninterrupted service, the power is working, power delivery service is working fine, the networking components are working fine, users are being able to connect uh, to the server and so on. The second one is service interruption. This is where the delivered service is different from the SLA, where users are seeing longer waiting times or they are getting denial of service or they are not able to connect or they are not able to do transactions. So there's a lot of things in it, right? I mean, some people might be able to connect to the server, but the authorization does not work or the authorization works, but they're not able to get their emails, right? So it could be it could be a combination of which all of the, them come under service interruption, right? There's something is wrong with the service. Either you're not able to log in or you're able to log in, not able to get your emails and so on. So how do we define failure? So we define failure as the transition from state one to state two, right? So you are in this continuous state of service accomplishment where the system is up and working and there's no problem. And then you are interrupted. That is when you fall into state two, which is failure, right? So that is where the service is now interrupted. And we could say the restoration is when you go from the service interruption state back to the service accomplishment state, right? So let's say you're not able to connect to the server and then you provide this backup server which takes up all the load and then you're able to connect to it, you would say that is restoration or it is repairing or something that changes the state to go from two to one. So this kind of a design where you go from a service accomplishment to service interruption, there are different techniques, mathematical models that can be used to study this. One of the very popular models is Markov chains. So you can specify a Markov chain where you could say the failure rate is lambda. You go from you know this particular state, state one, to a failed state, which is state two, and then you have a particular rate of repair. We call it a mu to go return from state two to state one, right? And we can define uh, different um, distributions to specify how long it would take. Some of them could be a most common distribution that we use to model these are uh, exponential distribution because they make it very easy to analyze and evaluate um, mathematical models for this kind of a thing. Now, if you go into the module reliability, right, this is generally a measure of a continuous service accomplishment or what we call as time to fail, right? Or uh, So there are two measures there. The first one is the mean time to fail, what we call as MTTF, and this generally measures reliability. So what we say in MTTF is, what is the mean time to fail for this particular system, right? That is, that we call this as the expected time to fail. And if you model this as a distribution, this is the expected value of that random variable. So let's say failure is a random variable of type exponential distribution, then expected value of that random variable is the mean time to fail. And failure in fit is the actual metric or 1 by MTTF. This is the rate of failure. So the rate at which things are failing and most often we call this as in exponential distribution this is nothing but a parameter of lambda this is the rate at which it's going to fail and we report this as failure in billions of hours of operation so we expect systems to operate for billions of hours and what is the failure in time what is the rate of failure and this could be of your uh, module reliability the mean time to repair on the other hand, this measures the service interruption, right? This says, how often are we going to interrupt the service, right? Uh, so the mean time to repair is another important metric, right? This says, we're going to go into service, fix it, measure the service interruption, 
And the mean time between failures, that is you have one failure and then you repair the system and then you see another failure, right? So the mean time between failures, or what is called as MTPF, is the mean time to fail and the mean time to repair. So if you add those two, that would be the mean time between two failures, right? Because you repair the system, then you expect the system to fail in a certain amount of time, add the two parameters, you end up with the mean time between failures. And if you look at what is the module availability, and this is a very important metric, right? Availability tells us how you are alternating between these two states of accomplishment where the system is up and working and interruption when the system is not working. And this is generally a number, right? You can say this number is, a, this system is available for 90% of the time, or it is a number of 0.9, and it alternates between 0 and 1. So we could then call the module availability or the availability of the system as MTTF divided by MTTF plus MTTR. That is the mean time to fail divided by the mean time to fail plus mean time to repair. And this is how we can calculate the availability of the system. Generally, we use a term of uh, lambda to call a failure rate and mu for a failure rate. Then this term, after you do the division, it would look like mu divided by mu plus lambda. Okay.